And Glendronach was, uh, it was founded in 1826 by the extrovert James Allardis. James Allardis was a bit of a womanizer and a bit of a, 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 a big man, bigger than life, larger than life, especially when he was invited to come to London, uh, an invitation that was extended to him by the Duke of Gordon. Because the Duke was so, uh, uh, he so much loved this whiskey that he simply had to meet with James Allardis. And James went to London, but he went there to stay. He, uh, he sort of neglected his distillery. He didn't even go back to the distillery when it was ravaged by fire in 1837. Now, Walter Scott, uh, he, uh, he bought the ruins of the distillery and also the license, and he rebooted Glendronach at the time. But by 1916, he also had to close. It was reopened again by Charles Grant in 1920. Now, Charles Grant was the son of William Grant. And who is William Grant? He, of course, is one of the founders of the uh, Glenfiddich distillery. Now, that was not to last. Uh, by 1960, uh, Glendronach became part of William Teachers and Sons, but they also had to close in 1995. It lasted until 2004 before the distillery came back online, and it wasn't until 2008 that Billy Walker and his team uh, acquired the Glendronach distillery. You know Billy Walker, of course, because he was the man who put Ben Riech back on the map. And after Glendronach, he also went on to acquire the Glen Glasswell distillery. Now, Ben Riech, Billy Walker, he is well known for experimenting with different types of casks. And this Glendronach expression is one of the results. This is a 14-year-old Glendronach. It is bottled at 46% ABV. But what is special about this one, it got a finish on a Sauterne wine cask. Now, Sauternes, or Sauternes as they say in France, is a French wine, it's a very sweet dessert wine, and I am very curious as to what that has done to the Glendronach whiskey. So, like I said, bottled at 46% ABV, a good drinking strength, but not needing chill filtration, making it redundant because of the high alcohol strength. It's got this beautiful, deep golden sheen, almost coppery, and I do believe it has quite a nice body because it takes quite a while for the legs to form on the inside of the glass, on the nose. Well, this is very fruity. I get all sorts of fruits. I get some apples, I get some melon, some grapes, must be wine. And I also get some, some, some apples in, the, in, in a baking pan sprinkled with cinnamon, very nice. Well, the, real, the, the, the wine clearly has put its stamp on this, uh, on this whiskey, but in a positive way. On the palate then. Mm. It is very creamy, but immediately very sweet as well. I get loads of vanilla, I get some candied apricots, some banana, and even some kiwi. So, this is, it is, it is sweet, but in a positive way. But again, the, uh, the, the, the Sauterne wine has clearly uh, put its stamp on this, on this whiskey. On the finish then. The finish is very long, and the whiskey remains very creamy as well. I get a touch of oak at the death though, but it is far from oaky, let me tell you. This is a very creamy, fruity and sweet, very easy drinking uh, whiskey, and it's, a, it's an, at an acceptable uh, alcohol level as well. Well, I'm always a bit careful when sipping whiskey that has been touched by wine, because it's, in my opinion, it's always hit and miss, uh, and there's a lot of uh, misses in, in that category as well. But this is quite a hit, in my opinion. The uh, sauterness has actually added a layer of complexity to this whiskey, which makes it, uh, uh, the influence is very positive, in my opinion, and that makes the Glendronach 14-year-old Sauterne wine finish a very nice whiskey indeed. And that's all for this Whiskey Rambling, and I hope to see you again at one of Mark's Whiskey Ramblings real soon. And until then, may the malt be with you. <laughs>